So it's never good to make assumptions, but I'm going to assume that if you're here right now, you have a presentation to give, it's an online presentation, and you're nervous about it. Am I right? Well, good news, I'm here to help, and I'm gonna start by giving you an opening statement that I'd like you to keep with you for the entire video, and that is, People have very low expectations when it comes to online presentations. Now, I say this not to discourage you, but to encourage you because what this means is that there is a large window of opportunity to shine in the online presentation world, which is exactly what you're going to do if you follow the tips in these videos. Sound good? Hi there, my name is Chelsea Seaburn. Welcome to The Smart Student. Today's video is gonna be all about how to properly present PowerPoint presentations. So you're not lost, the way this video is structured is that I'm gonna start with some confidence and speaking advice. I'm then gonna get into how to prepare for your presentation, and then we're gonna talk about setup, including your laptop setup and an optimal Zoom setup. The goal is to go from this to this. But first things first, let's go ahead and start with the confidence. I'm starting with this because if you can bring confidence and energy to your presentations, that's half the battle right there. And when it comes to bringing that energy to your presentations, my best advice is to speak with enthusiasm. You do this by adding an extra 10% to your energy level. Honestly, the drier the topic, the more energy you should bring to your presentation. I know this because, hello, my YouTube channel is the holy grail of dry topics. APA formatting, anyone? But every time I sit down in front of my camera, I bring 210%, 110%. If you can bring 210% to your presentation, you're set, but bringing 110% will work just fine. You can also create energy in your presentations by speaking through your hands. Bonus, when you use hand gestures to communicate, this is gonna help move around that extra energy you probably have balled up inside of you from your nerves. When it comes to your confidence, the easiest hack that everyone has at their disposal is to speak with a smile. People can hear your enjoyment through the degree to which you're smiling, and that directly translates into how confident you feel and how confident your audience feels. Also, if you happen to mess up, when you're already smiling, you're more likely to laugh about it, which goes a long way in appearing comfortable in what you're saying, even when you're not. Let me share two clips with you so you can hear and see what I mean. My name is Chelsea Seaburn. Today for my strategic management presentation, I'm gonna be discussing Amazon's business model. I hope you guys are ready because I'm really excited to do this. My name is Chelsea Seaburn. Today for my strategic management presentation, I'm gonna be discussing Amazon's business model, and I hope you're ready for this because I'm really excited to give this presentation. Could you tell the difference? In that first clip, it was clear that I was uncomfortable, I was nervous, and I just didn't want to be there, which in turn makes the other person on the other side of the camera feel the same way. They no longer want to be there because now they're feeling uncomfortable. But in that second clip, when I'm speaking with a smile, there's energy in my voice. I'm excited to present, which in turn pulls the viewer in and all of a sudden it's not, oh, here we go, Amazon, another boring strategic management presentation to, ooh, this chick is talking about Amazon. I wanna hear what she has to say. Now, moving on to my next tip, which is, if you have the option to stand, I recommend doing that because this is gonna give you an authority boost. There's just something different about standing straight up with your feet planted firmly on the ground versus sitting. Now, obviously I'd move around my camera angle a little bit, but I'm doing this to demonstrate a point. Now, that being said, if you don't have the option to stand, that's completely fine, but when you're sitting, you should still have those feet planted firmly on the ground, your back should be straight, you should be sitting up tall, and your elbows should be off the desk. You see, when you're sitting in a power pose, if you will, this is gonna help you deliver what you're saying with power. Now, moving on to my last tip when it comes to confidence in speaking, and that is, if you're truly still feeling nervous despite all of these tips, that's fine. 
name it. Go ahead and tell your audience that you're feeling nervous because this can always be said in an unalarming way, which is gonna help diffuse the tension. For example, if you start by saying something like, hi everyone, my name is Chelsea Seaburn, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous right now, but regardless, I'm happy you guys are all here with me because despite my nerves, you see, that's relatable. People relate to nerves because we're all human, especially when giving an online presentation for school, when most of you don't give presentations. They understand that it's nerve wracking, so go ahead and name it. And if you notice, if you say it with all of the tips, meaning you're smiling, you're using hand gestures, you're gonna appear confident and warm, despite the fact that you're telling everyone that you're feeling nervous. Now, let's talk about planning and preparation. Tip number one here, and no surprise is that you should practice, practice, practice ahead of time. But here's the thing, believe it or not, what makes presentations online so nerve wracking isn't just giving the presentation, but a lot of times it's the technology that comes with it. So you're not only going to practice your presentation beforehand, but you're going to practice the technology setup that comes with it. Let's go ahead and go over each one. So starting with practicing your presentation, I highly recommend running through your presentation a few times, maybe three to five times because the more times you practice your presentation, the easier it's going to be for you to deliver it. And when you practice your presentation, another thing I highly recommend is to practice it in a conversational manner. In other words, don't read word for word off your notes. I actually recommend creating your notes in a bullet point formatting. And then when you're practicing, just look at the slides that your audience is going to be seeing and get used to just talking about them. Now, if there are a few points that you need to make that you're not including on your slide, that's fine. That's where those bullet points come in handy. But whatever you do, I don't suggest writing out your notes in full sentences because when you look down, you're in a pinch, you're trying to remember what you're trying to say. When you read a full sentence, your audience can see that. For example, I have a script right here. So if I'm looking down trying to remember what I'm trying to say and I'm reading a full sentence, you're gonna pick up on that and it's gonna look like I just didn't prepare. Now my pro tip for you is that when you're practicing, go ahead and practice speaking into the eye of your webcam lens because it's strange, but it's amazing how different it is when you're talking directly at a camera. First, when you're just practicing in open air or maybe in the mirror or against a wall, whatever, something happens when that lens is turned on. So I suggest speaking to it so that you don't freeze up when you present through your webcam because it's the first time you're talking to a webcam. And that leads me right into the next point, which is to do a technology test run. So if you're already practicing your presentation with Zoom on, that's great, but more so than getting used to speaking to your camera, you wanna make sure that everything runs smoothly on the technology side when you're presenting. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna be giving you the the optimal zoom setups we'll get into that and that's what you're gonna be practicing here but more so you also want to check for sound quality your lighting and you want to make sure your background is nice and neat now I'm not gonna waste my precious YouTube seconds on telling you that you should clean up whatever your background is which for most of you including myself is your bedroom so let's go ahead and move on to the next point which is sound quality when it comes to your sound quality when you're presenting the one thing you need to remember is is that what you hear, your audience can hear as well. So there are a few things you can do to minimize the amount of sounds and distractions coming from your side, but first things first, I recommend wearing headphones when you give your presentation because that's gonna create the first line of sound protection from your environment. Now, if your headphones are noise canceling, fantastic. You're probably good to go with that. If you're interested in a good pair of noise canceling headphones, the AirPod Pros are the trending headphones on the market right now. But let's be real, not everyone has noise canceling headphones because they're expensive. So I've actually created a pretty cool hack for you if you're looking for a cheaper noise canceling canceling option, come with me. What this super cool hack entails is whatever pair of headphones you have to work with, yes, even a cheapy tangled wiry pair like this, exhibit A, go ahead and put them in, plug them in, and then the genius noise canceling affordable hack, are you ready for it, is a pair of noise canceling earmuffs that can be bought for approximately $12 on Amazon. This will create that same noise canceling barrier from your environment, just like an expensive pair of noise canceling headphones. And let's be honest, they look pretty cool. 
Now, the last thing that I'm gonna say about sound quality is to be smart about your environment. Guys, close your window, close your bedroom door, and please, for the love of all that is good, wait to do household chores until after your presentation. This may sound like common sense, but I say it because honestly, if I had a dollar for every time I started my laundry before I had to film a YouTube video, now, if your dog barks, laugh and tell everyone that Fido says hi. <coughs> Next, let's talk about improving the general appearance of your setup. So we all know by now that a laptop on a flat desk does not equal a flattering camera angle. So you need to somehow lift your laptop up so your camera angle is eye level. The quickest fix for this that I recommend doing is to simply grab a stack of books and lift your laptop up. And if you don't have books because you're a Netflix type, grab some of those empty Amazon boxes you have laying around. I know you have them, we all do. But since online schooling and working from home seem to be a bit of a norm now, you can also opt to upgrading your workstation by buying something like a laptop stand. This one here is a Bowtie laptop stand that I absolutely love, and it's honestly one of my favorite additions to my home office. And this particular laptop stand is nice because it's collapsible, so I can throw it in my backpack and travel with it. But now, let's talk about lighting. Now, you don't have to go full professional, and honestly, since you're giving a PowerPoint presentation, lighting isn't gonna be the most important thing, but nevertheless, whatever your light source is, you wanna have it in front of you. Don't sit with your back to your light source if you can avoid it. So for example, if your window is what your light source is, sit with it in front of you so it lights up the front of your face. Now, that being said, if you don't have an option to sit with the window in front of you like I do, my window is behind me, there are a few things you can do to improve the lighting in your setup. One, you can bring in something like a lamp from another room and sit it on your desk in front of you. Two, you can buy something like a cheap ring light. Or three, Hail Mary hack for you here, but you can actually use the flashlight on your iPhone. Now, you don't want to use the straight flashlight on your iPhone. You want to cover it up. But what I would do is you can literally put a paper towel over the lens and that's going to help distribute the light evenly and it's not going to look as harsh. So up to this point, you're in pretty good shape. But let's go ahead and go over the last piece of the puzzle and that is how to set up zoom on your end. You're going to be able to see your presentation, your notes, yourself, your audience, and the chat. The reason I'm gonna show you it this way is because you can take out some of those items if you don't care to see them, but I find that oftentimes when people present, especially students, teachers, they want to see more than just the presentation. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into my laptop. Hello, here we are inside my computer. We have Zoom on. On the right side right here, we have me from the presenter view, and then I have another laptop open so you can see what it looks like with audience. My audience today is going to be my little Corgi Maisie who clearly doesn't care about my Amazon presentation. But anyways, the method we're going to use is going to use the share a portion of a screen option in Zoom. And what I think is the best way to do this is go ahead and open up your PowerPoint presentation. By the way, if you need help creating APA PowerPoints, go ahead and check out this video up here. But anyways, the first thing you're going to do is I recommend splitting your screen so that your presentation is on one side. From here, go ahead and split your screen with Zoom on the other side like this. If you're using a MacBook, you can use the magnet tool to split your screen. And if you're using a PC, I'm pretty sure it already has that feature built into its functionality. But from here, I actually recommend minimizing the zoom over to the side just a little bit more so that way your presentation can take up more of the screen because that's gonna improve the quality that your viewer sees and it's gonna allow you to see more of your presentation. But from here, now we're gonna go ahead and set the share a portion of a screen button. You do this by coming over to the more option menu, selecting share screen, and then from here, you wanna switch from basic to the advanced options. Under here, you're gonna see the option to share a portion of your screen, which you're gonna click, and then click share. And now if you notice, this green window pops up. What that window is, is what your viewers are going to see. And so what's nice is you can readjust this box by holding your mouse down on it while you resize it like this. And if you'd like to take note how the box changes from green to orange when you do this, your screen sharing is paused so your viewers don't actually see you switching up your screen, they just see what the end result looks like. And by the way, if you test this out beforehand, your presentation window box will already be sized to your presentation, which is why those technology test runs come in handy. 
But what's nice about this mode is that from here you can see yourself, you can see your audience. If you want to add in the chat, come up here and select more one more time, which will give you the chat option. You can bring your chat over to your open space on the right, just like that. And then bonus, you can still see your notes because all you have to do while you're presenting is click on the slides as you go through them. Now, a quick pro tip is that you already want to have your notes adjusted so that way you don't have to readjust while you're presenting. For example, let's say I come to this slide and I can't see all of my notes and I had to resize it while I was presenting, my viewers would see me do that. So you want to run through this ahead of time again because it's very important so that way you don't have to resize things as you're presenting. Quick disclaimer here, those methods are workarounds so that you have the flexibility to see all of those features. If you don't care about those, you don't care about seeing the chat, the audience, yourself, then I recommend showing your presentation through presenter view and printing out your bullet point note list ahead of time. That is by far the most simple, non-technological method. All you have to do is click through your PowerPoint presentations and refer to your printed notes. My pro tip for you is that if you do choose that method, place your notes somewhere around the camera lens so that way you're not constantly looking down or to the side. Anyways, if you're still here right now, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through. It's your guys' support of the Smart Student channel that allows me to keep making these videos. I've actually had quite a few of you ask me how you can support this channel in a bigger way, so I'm so happy to announce that I've created a Patreon account. Come stop by if you're interested. The money from the Patreon is gonna go right back into this channel. Actually, that's a lie. Let's be real. The money from the Patreon is gonna go to support my lovely little doggo right here, making sure she lives her best life full of doggo bones and toys. Come check it out if you're interested. But as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe for more videos every week. Thank you.